This hill is actually called Abu Talal, and right where I'm standing, it was called the Bluff. And this point marked the Anzac Line from February right through to September 1918. They held this line in the stinking hot heat, malaria. They would bring troops in, they would man it for a few weeks, they would go back out for rest and bring more in. And a very interesting point is that it was the troops who had actually spent time at Gallipoli. It was the hardened Anzac division that were here because I think they believed that it was the hard guys that had already done a hard time, had the consistency, the makeup, to stand the terror of this valley in summer. I'm about halfway between Jerusalem and Jericho, and this area on the Roman road was set up as a rest camp and headquarters for the Aussies. They would come up from the Jordan Valley and spend some time resting here before going back into the heat in the summertime or they might go right up to into Bethlehem around Solomon's Pools. Now this area is also known as the area of the Good Samaritan Inn and the story that Jesus told of the Good Samaritan. Uh, you can understand how robbers and thieves on this road could easily hide and easily ambush people. It's been notorious through the ages for that. And of course now we can't continue all the way down this road into Jericho because of the current day politics. Amid all the background noise and the excavations going on underneath me, I want to tell you about what happened on this amazing place. This is the bluff. I'm right up on top of Abu Talal. We had machine gun posts spread out across here. The Turks were in that direction, but not a lot was happening all through this uh, summer. They weren't in the mood for a fight. There'd be the occasional shot and a bit of artillery, but the line was lightly held. That is until about July the 13th, the Anzacs noticed there were troops building up and they figured an attack was imminent. Sure enough, at 3 a.m. in the morning of July the 14th, a whole lot of uh, artillery started happening and troops began to swarm down the valley and they took out machine gun posts and encircled and cut off machine gun posts. Of course, it was still pitch black and our guys had a real fight on their hands. There were about 1,500 troops, but through the dark, they noticed something about these troops. They weren't the normal Turks that they were used to fighting. These guys were Germans. They were like German stormtroops, especially brought in to try and dislodge the Anzacs from this important high place. And the bottom line is, they succeeded. By daylight, around about the time daylight came, the Anzacs were pushed off this hill down the back towards the Jordan Valley. There were English batteries firing artillery over the hill, but the Germans took this high ground. And if it wasn't for a charge led by some Anzac leaders down the bottom, they just took a, a, a mad charge with some reinforcements, came back up the hill, but they actually dislodged the, the Germans away from this once and for all. Well, the battle was won and uh, other battles occurred out here around the Jordan and they ended up taking scores and scores of German prisoners. They took them down to Jericho and we're told the prisoners stumbled across the Aussie grog shop and they got themselves clearly tanked on the grog and they were cheering the Anzacs as they were marched back up toward Jerusalem. But another interesting thing, the Germans were also quite angry because the Turks that were positioned around here were meant to get involved in this fight and they were reluctant to do that. They wanted the Germans to face what they'd been facing all this time. And so it just added to the animosity between the German leadership and the Turkish troops. <laughs> 